back to another edition of Ramble on Woodworking. Today we're going to be turning a Victorian resin pen kit. I got this kit on Amazon. It's made by uh, Legacy Woodworking and it's a, a really nice kit. Um, it's a two-part kit and so um, it requires two different drill bits and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the blank that we're going to use today is a blank that I poured myself. Um, I would say it's uh, it's kind of a hybrid, kind of not, in that it's uh, a bunch of individual pieces of resin then kind of held together, if you will, with a marbled resin appearance. And I think you'll like the look of it at the end. So we start off by marking the blank to the length of each of the two parts. Just leave a little little bit of extra space for the pen brass tubes if we need them. So cut them just a little longer. I use the miter saw to do this, taking just a very slow, methodical cut, both for safety and to get a nice finish on the end of that blank. Um, always make an attempt to hold the longer end if possible, so that it's nice and safe. And like I said, you'll get a nice clean cut. Um, and it reduces the need for having to use other tools for finishing off the end of the blank. After that, it's over to the drill press where uh, I'm using my Savannah pen vise. I love this vise because it's uh, highly adjustable and many of my blanks come out rectangular as opposed to more square. It's just the nature of the mold that I made to, uh, to make these blanks. And uh, the vise does a real great job of being accommodating to all the different sizes. Um, the bits that I use um, are from uh, Fish. They make a real nice uh, bit that's quite long. Um, the limiting factor here for when I make uh, these borings is often the throw on my drill press. But when you're doing a two-part pen like this, uh, you'll make it through the blank in one pass. Don't, uh, don't go too quickly in this part. Um, if you do, when the bit comes out the other end, it has a tendency to grab the blank and it wants to twist the vise in your hand. So, especially at the point where the bit's going to come through the blank, take it nice and slow. You can see here that the uh, throw on my press was not long enough to make it through in one pass. So, we have two choices. One is to lower the table like I just did. The other is to raise the blank up into the bit. Either way is fine. Um, and then you can finish boring the hole. All set, now it's back over to the kit where we take some 60 grit sandpaper and we are going to rough up the surface of the brass tube. This uh, helps the uh, super glue to adhere to the blank more strongly. I use uh, Gorilla Glue in the gel. Uh, a little bit goes a long way. And so um, um, usually just one pass of the glue down the length of the tube is enough and then we give it a good twist inside the blank. I wear gloves just so that uh, just so they don't get it on my hands usually takes a couple of days to be able to pick it off when that happens but um, so like I said one length around along the length of the tube and then just an insertion and a twist you have about three or five seconds there to get it inside the blank so don't hesitate too much wipe off any excess both off the end of the blank as well as any that might be inside the tube And because this is a double barrel pen, we'll repeat the process on the end cap portion of this pen. Like I said, when, when the video is done, I think you're going to agree that this is really a beautiful kit. It does have uh, some tricky parts when it comes to the assembly. We'll talk about those in a little, little bit. Here I'm just uh, taking off the excess part of the blank that is longer than the length of the tube. You can uh, eyeball that part if you like. 
and um, your goal is to get it so that the tube is uh, the same length as the blank but if you want to fine-tune it a little bit further you can do what I'm doing here and that is to sand the end um, there are also barrel trimmers that you can use I, I don't really like the barrel trimmer idea but other people have success with it and so that works um, but you just want to be able to sneak up on that brass tube so that it matches um, it's the appropriate length and the, the pen kit works properly after that it's uh, time to mount it up onto the mandrel this kit comes with three bushings that center bushing actually has two different diameters to it that's kind of neat and of course the goal is to turn the blank down to the diameter of those bushings uh, the bushings match the diameter of the parts of the pen that you're turning down to so the tip and in this case the center section and the uh, and the end cap I reach for my uh, my simple uh, woodworking wood turning tools um, I say simple that's the brand name uh, again I bought them myself so this is not a, a a paid endorsement but I love these tools number one of course you saw that it's a carbide tipped tool so it stays sharp for a very long time especially when you're working with resin uh, the second thing I like about them is that they are solidly built um, and that the handles are color-coded so even if I leave the cap on to protect the tip I'm able to know which tool I'm grabbing for without um, having to remove that tip and, and so you can see uh, as we start that we're taking light passes the chips are are a bit small here no reason to be particularly aggressive when turning pens um, I'm speeding it up now at four times and you see those chips start to get longer and longer until we reach the cylinder shape that we're looking for and they become quite long so with this pen the goal is to make a shape that's a little more oval or egg shaped if you will and so as we turn it down you see that um, we bring the, the, the blanks, I would say, down hard to the bushing as opposed to having it be a smooth transition and it gives you that cigar shape similar to a cigar, a cigar type pen. But um, it really does two things. One, it makes the pen feel kind of hefty and, and solid in your hand. And two, it, it also is a very comfortable way to grip the pen. Um, everyone that receives them as a gift really is taken by being able to see the beauty of all the patterns in that resin once we're done with the tuning uh, with the turning we can then move on to the sanding and it means um, in for me the micro mesh pads I leave these pads soaked all the time in a bowl because when it comes to resin wet sanding I find is much more desirable then dry sanding it helps to dissipate the heat it keeps the dust down uh, although you can see in the back there is my dust collector in my lathe hood um, ever since I've gone this way I really have cut down tremendously the amount of dust that I'm being exposed to in fact um, I don't really need to wear a respirator anymore when I'm turning and that's that's big especially in my garage in the summertime when it gets quite hot um, it's something that I look forward to. So working through the the progression of micro mesh grits, you can see the shape is taking shape, no pun intended, and um, and we're almost done with the the sanding part. Pink being the twelve thousand grit within the micro mesh series. I really like the way that pattern looks and it's going to look even better with the gunmetal finish of the kit now I uh, use Meguiar's the 105 here this is their um, cutting compound it's very similar to what is used in auto detailing um, it's got a very fine abrasion to it um, it's a two-step process this is the 105 polishing compound um, and then after we apply that we step up to the 205 within that product line we go from a cutting compound to a polishing compound and I really really like 
the way that finish turns out. Um, there are other very popular um, paste grits to be used. Um, and I'll say by name that Yorkshire grit is very popular among YouTubers. The reason that I use Meguiar's often on resin, quite honestly, is that I found it difficult to find um, Yorkshire grit in the United States when I first started turning. And so um, I came up with this substitute. I've since started using Yorkshire grit, especially on wood uh, turnings. But here, um, I'm real happy with the way the Meguiar's turns out. And there you can see, I mean, you could stop at this point in time. Uh, I like to take it a step further and use the, the Hut Crystal Coat. It's a, a friction finish that just adds another layer of protection. Um, some days I love this product, and other days I wish I didn't apply it. Um, it leaves the pen sometimes a little sticky, for lack of a better word, but, um, or it can. Other days, the finish is just beautiful, but don't push too hard. If you do, the finish will get chalky and very opaque. Um, so just enough to watch the shine come back from the application, and that's how you know that you're done. Just be careful, of course, when using rags around the lathe to make sure that you don't get them caught up in the spindle. No loose, uh, loose pieces hanging out. And so as far as the lathe work goes and the finish of the, of the, of the pen itself, we're done and it's time for some assembly. Um, I'm using my Milescraft. This is the uh, seven, uh, 4700 uh, pen press. I bought this because the reviews were quite high and I'm completely satisfied with my purchase. I like the adjustability of the different lengths. It's quite easy to do. Um, it's spring-loaded, so it always comes back to where you need it to be to start pressing the next section in. And also because of the length of that arm, you get a lot of sensitivity in the compression or pressure that you can put onto the kit. Very important with this kit because the manufacturer, Legacy, requires you to um, press the uh, pen transmission into the lower section to a length that they describe as somewhere between three quarters of an inch and 13 sixteenths, I believe. And if you don't do it right, uh, then the pen doesn't function properly. But there you go. We're all done. I hope you liked that video. Please uh, subscribe if you did. And I'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.